Today's date is 4-7-2018. We're here at the American Red Cross, and uh, this Mr. Frank Chamberlain is going to go on the honor flight, the honor flight out of Evansville, Indiana. And we're going to talk to Frank. He's in the Navy, so he's a, a squid there. He's in the Navy. He's going to tell us where he's born, what a, where he's born, and what date. I was born in Houghton, Kentucky. I was born on the 3rd, 27th, 33. And what county is Houghton in? Webster. So he's in Webster County. That's south of Evansville, about 40 miles. It's near Slaughter's and uh, right. Uh, right near Madisonville, right. north of Hopkinsville. About 150 population. So it's not a real big town, but mostly a farming community. Right. So then he uh, was born there and you raised there most of your I life? Was raised in Seabree. In Seabree. And on a farm, or what were you raised on? No, I was raised in town. Uh huh. Seabree's a uh, uh, town south of uh, Henderson, about uh, 20 miles or so. Right. And then when did you get in the service, and why did you get in the service? And you go to grade school and high school there in uh, Seabree? I finished high school in 1952. Two weeks later, I was in the Navy. And did you enlist, or were you drafted? I volunteered. You volunteered. And where did you sign up, in Evansville or somewhere else? Louisville. In Louisville. So you passed the physical, and then where'd you go to boot, and then where'd you go after that? I went to San Diego, California, and then I went from San Diego, California, to the LST 802, Hamilton County. Okay, so LST 802 was one of the original LSTs that was World War II, uh, vintage. They've right. changed it since then to a different type of LST, but... We only have one left in the world today, and it's in Evansville, Indiana, and he used to give tours on the LST in Evansville, Indiana. Right. So so you boarded the LST, and tell us what was on that LST when you went, and where you went. To, you went to Korea on the LST? We went to Korea, three trips to Korea after the war was ended over there in uh, 53, I guess. May, I think, of 53. We uh, hauled three loads of Korean prisoners, North Korean prisoners from Koji Do Camp to Pusan. Exchange them for South Korean prisoners. Were you had a gun and guard them with a gun or just? No, the Navy, I mean the Army did that. We furnished the transportation. Did you keep them in the bottom of the ship and just have them laying on the bottom of the ship in the deck there? They were, yes. Yes, they had, they had, Cage is built, and they put 50 in the cage. Huh. 50 and per cage, per and cage. maybe 15 cages in the bottom of the ship? Probably, yeah. probably. And they had a 55-gallon drum cut in half, and that was their bathroom. Uh, they would take this drum and carry it on their shoulders and dump it over the fan tail. Wow. Out in the ocean. And when you, they had, somebody had to get inside the cage to empty the latrine, then, didn't they? And they'd take it outside and empty it? Right. Yeah. Well, they, it's 55 gallon drum. Yeah, pretty and big. That was their bathroom. Yes. Half huh. of it. And what'd they get for food? Just whatever you they had? Got, they got dried fish and rice. Not much, and a little bit of water? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you were on that ship, you had to cross the Pacific three times. Tell me about bad weather in that ship and big waves. Tell us about your uh, toughest experience. Well, you be in a convoy, maybe ten or twelve people, uh, ten or twelve ships, and sometimes single file most of the time. Uh, sometimes you get well, you in a convoy. Yeah. And sometimes you would get 40, 40, 50 foot waves, and you ride it up, get on the top, you ride it down. Yes. Sir. Is it scary? You going to turn over? Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So you got in the middle of typhoons. The weather reports weren't as good then. You're in the middle of some typhoons, probably. Right. And you wish you weren't. Right. You said, why am I not on dry line when that was that? I wonder why I wasn't in the Army. <laughs> At that time, you said, oh, I could be on the Army. Yeah. Now, um, did you have any uh, things that were scary experiences besides the weather and the waves out there? Any scary experiences when you went over to Korea or other times? Not really. Oh, we yeah. went to... Uh, when they thought uh, Chiang Kai-shek was going to overrun Formosa, they sent us down there to uh, pick up the troops, I mean Americans on the island there. And as it happened, we was there about three days and never did have to pick up anybody. Yeah. But they were going to take all Americans off the island. Yeah. And that was 
that close to saying he told them to being their boy. Yeah. And then they sent us back to San Francisco and we went in the shipyard and they turned us into a supply ship for the uh, uh, can't think what they call them now. The ones that traveled up and down the Oak River it's over there. Anyway, we were uh, have a commander on there, uh, and he was in charge of the fleet over the, I can't think what they call that fleet, the ones that travel up and down the river uh -huh, uh -huh. in Korea. Sacramento River and things like that. Right. Are you, are the Korean rivers? You were on the Korean yeah. rivers? Yeah, right. I see. Right. Yeah. But uh, no, I, I didn't see any war. Yeah. Um, what's your uh, thoughts about our freedom and about the need for young kids being in the military and how important our freedom is? Well, my thoughts are they should still have a draft and that be give some of these young boys something to learn how to do, uh, at least learn how to be patient. Yeah. I think that's important too. He taught, taught you a lot of discipline at a young age. Almost you came out a man in two or three years. You're there in the service three, four, five, four years. So four you years. came out a different person, did you not? I think so. Yeah, yeah. So, then what did you do here in Evansville for your living? Uh, I've never worked anywhere. I, I was, I'm a barber. I've been a barber for 60 years. What's the name of your barber shop and where is it? It's a Green Street Barber Shop in Henderson. Is that right? 60 years. Wow. So you knew Admiral Kimmel over there. Admiral Kimmel, they just put a statue up in memory of him, a bronze statue right. in downtown Henderson. Right. Can you tell, Admiral Kimmel, can you tell us a little bit about him? Not really. I yeah. Suppose. But yeah, but he's down there. They commemorated his statue. He was right. he was a commander of the Pacific Fleet when right. Pearl Harbor happened. So he went down right. in disfame, but the family's trying to resurrect say it wasn't really his fault. He was a scapegoat for that. Yeah. But he's yeah. a famous, there's only about uh, five uh, admirals or generals in this area, and Admiral Kimmel was really famous. We oh, didn't have an uh, admiral like that anywhere in the Evansville and Henderson area. He was four star. Four star, yeah, but an admiral, yeah, four star admiral. You hardly ever see that around here. No. We've had other ones in this area. Point Dexter was an admiral, and uh, there was a nine guy Tuttle from Hatfield, Point Dexter from up in Washington, and then. Uh, there's one right now, it was, uh, there's a guy named uh, Evans, Marvin Evans is a general here, and then uh, uh, one other guy is right now a retired general at age 94 in the reserves. But those are the only flag rank that we have in this area, five of them, so it's rare. Right. Um, but Henderson was, uh, uh, you would see those uh, ships go by in World War II, we made the LST here, and it go right on by Henderson and go down to go down the river all right. the way to New Orleans. We right. made 167 here in Evans. So, right. And tell us about being a tour guide on the LST. How fulfilling was that to you? Because you could really tell what it was about. Oh, yeah. The big anchor on the, you never used the big anchor on the back or the big anchor on the back that they used in World War II. You probably yeah. never did use it. Or yeah, did you use it? Yeah. You did we when you went landed. to- We made landings over in Korea, uh, no, Japan. Tell us about that landing with that big anchor in the back and how you do that. It's a very unique creation. Well, they would go in at high tide and they would drop the rear anchor like 150 yards out. <coughs> 150 yards out. And then when the tide would come back in, they'd use that anchor to winch you off the beach. And you unloaded the whole ship when it was, dry, when it was low tide. Right, I have pictures at home of it. Yeah. Setting those turret, yeah. you know. See a lot of that in World War II on D Day, but that's exactly right. what you were doing right. over in Japan. You didn't need a port, you could just unload wherever you needed anywhere. Right. It, right. it was usually a sandy beach, it wasn't on coral. Right, right. Yeah. No. Because coral was difficult during the invasion of all those West, uh, those Pacific Islands. It was difficult right. for an LST in some yeah. places. And uh, the LCBPs that they made landed with, a lot of them didn't make it. Yes. You know? Yes. Yeah, the Higgins boat, the, Elf, the Higgins boat you're talking about, the whole 36 people right. had a hard time because it scraped the bottom there, made of wood. And, right. How many Higgins boat davits did you have on your ship? Did you have six, two, two davits? Two. Did you carry anything else? Did you have any uh, cushions around the side, uh, the pontoons? Oh, yeah. No. No, no pontoons, no, yeah. No. But you had two davits. Anything else you carry on the top? No. Yeah. No. Yeah. yeah. 
just had uh, 40 millimeter uh, guns on the front and the back, yeah. and 20 millimeters up around the, uh, well, for the captains, for uh, the got it to ship. Yes, yeah, yeah. Yeah, oh. 20, so they had six guns, two 20s, and four 40s. Right. Yeah, yeah. They were anti-aircraft, for anti-aircraft. You were sitting duck, though, most of the time. Oh, yeah. yeah. Now, uh, how fast do you go, about average eight miles an hour around the world? Not too fast? Uh, not more. Uh, right. Ten miles was supposed to be the top. It's shaking a little bit when it got too fast. Right. Yeah. And you get in one of those storms and you got up on that wave and shake the whole rear end of the ship. If you happen to be sleeping back there in the after part of the ship, you didn't get much sleep. Yeah. No. Yeah. Well, um, thank you very much, Frank. You've been a good interviewer and uh, this we'll try to make a copy of this. I'll let you write your name down. We'll send this to you. So you've got it if your family might want it. Uh, give it to you, okay? And uh, you're going to have a good time on this honor flight. I appreciate that, sir. It's all right.